You're listening to the After The Show Movie Podcast brought to you by ascully.com. And here are your hosts, A. Scully and Sid Talk. Hello, Sid Talk. Hello. Are you, have you recovered from your cold? Mostly. I was at 90%. Nice. So I got a throat clear in my uh, gullet every once in a while. Gullet? <laughs> are you a stalk? <laughs> what? A what? A uh, stalk? Yeah, a stalk, stalk of what? Corn? No, you know, like a bird. A stork? They have what? a gullet. A big stork. Don't we all have gullets? We do, but a stork yeah. has a very pronounced one. Yeah. No, I'm not a stork. All right. So... The before uh, the after the show discussion was of various topics. So it's of little interest. <laughs> I'm was, guessing. We were actually talking about world affairs. Mm-hmm. And um, Syria. Boring. It was actually pretty interesting. Was it? To be honest. I just get really bored with it all. It's just... Ugh. Like, the world's going to keep going. And the reason that there's problems in the world is that there are assholes, and that's it. It's very simple. Wouldn't so, it? I'm going to skip right to my advice. I'm going to tell you now, my advice is this. Life is short. Don't be an asshole. Wouldn't it be better for all of us if a geostorm hits us? <laughs> no, I don't want to kill everybody. <laughs> but the problem is selfish, greedy, blind, blind to the truth and reality about life. Of what it all really is. It's not about you and what you think and what you believe. It's about the survival of us. It's about food and medicine and staying alive and being creative and moving forward as as a species. That's it. It's extremely simple. And if you let your religious beliefs, your political beliefs about who gets what and who doesn't get what get in the way of that bigger picture, then you're an asshole. That's it. It's extremely basic. And for some reason... They usually get the same boring crap over and over. It's just going to be the way it is, so. Um, Sid, so you're scaring off our listeners. <laughs> hey. You should wait till the end when they're all, like, lulled into a sense of false security. I can, I can say that I am <laughs> notorious for being kind of a straight talker, I guess. I don't know. I don't care if anybody didn't like me. If you don't like my political views and you refuse then to listen to me talk about movies, they're very unrelated so that's kind of down to you, not down to me. All right. So this isn't all about that. <laughs> I know. Let's uh, move on. It's uh, Saturday, April the 14th. This is After the Show, your weekly movie review podcast, hosted by me and you, A. Scully and Sid Talk. Correct. It's, it's episode number 526. We're looking at the movie Geostorm. It's a 2017 movie. It's available now on Blu-ray from our friends at Warner Brothers, who sent us a copy to review. It's PG-13, and Sid Talk will give you the quick synopsis of Geo Storm. Well, hmm. I could list a number of movies that would make it very clear to you, but there's a pending global disaster with the weather, you know? Hot, Geo. cold, frozen water, tidal waves, etc. There's a reason for it. There's somebody who wants to exploit it. And there's somebody who knows everything and can solve it all. So I don't want to call it except it's a natural disaster movie. But it's a natural disaster caused by humans. Do you remember we used to own a car called a Geo Metro? I do. And I loved that Geo Metro until there, it died. There is also, around that time, a car called the Geo Storm. So this, mm. that's unfortunate that they named this movie that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um Well, I don't even know if Geostorm is a real thing. I just think it's made up. This movie, but it just—it's just. I think it is just two words slapped together. Like it sounds um, See, environmental. Now I'm have to look it up. Yeah. Geesh. All right, Geostorm, the latest <laughs> disaster movie in all. It is a disaster movie, and it's also a disaster movie. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about straight talking. We, yeah. I, you do you, you pretty good, too, to say your actual opinion. We always try to give it a good spin. Um. <laughs> oh, I'll say what I like. And, but, but, <laughs> and what uh, we don't like. <laughs> but there's more negative to this one for me. Okay, so I'll start by saying I'm a big fan of giant, dumb, blockbuster um, disaster movies. I love Armageddon. I still love Armageddon to this day. It's so stupid, but I love it. I love Day After Tomorrow, actually. It's mm-hmm. pretty good. Um, there are many. Uh, 2012 was a bit 
I, I enjoyed the spectacle of 2012. It just didn't really live up to what I was expecting from it. But these movies come along every couple of years. We've seen loads of these type oh, of yeah. movies. Oh, yeah, we've had Volcano. We had... Um, Deep Impact. Deep Impact, um, which is one of my recommendations. We've had The Core. Yeah. Um, that one year we had Volcano and... Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak. <laughs> so it was the same movie, but two different, made yeah. by two different ways. Now, they just come along every couple of years, this type of big movie. And I usually am up for seeing this kind of movie. Always, yes. Always, yeah. Because, I mean, I know it's going to be stupid. I know it's going to be obvious and, like, easy to understand what's going on and probably predictable. But the special effects and the fun of watching our world get destroyed in all various <laughs> different ways is always fun In a fun fictional setting. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let's move into Geostorm. While um, the director of this, Dean Devlin, is also the guy who, um, if you've seen any of the Jerry Bruckenheimer, not not Jerry Bruckenheimer, um, you know, the guy who made Independence Day. I always forget his name. If you've seen any of his movies, and he made a lot of disaster movies, Dean Devlin's always been his right-hand man on all those movies. Talking Godzilla, Day After Tomorrow, you know, all those types. So I thought, oh, that's a good pedigree for this type of film. Dean Devlin doing his own. Um, but this film, it just falls apart in every possible way. It fell apart for me in the first five minutes. First, the whole the first the first five minutes of this movie is all. It's a narration over the top. Which oh, if it usually starts with a narration like that, it's often. To get you to a point. And this really, yeah. like, a load of stuff happened with the weather. We did this thing to try and fix it. It's all fixed. And then we move to the future a little bit. Now what we have is a globally wrapped network of satellites that can change the weather. That's right. the premise of so spoiler alert. So our weather's messed up and these things, like, keep it in control. Like, yeah. So it's that's so it's interesting. holding off complete and utter Earth disasters, but not really for Earth, more right. for us, because the Earth wouldn't care. But it's about us. Now I found that premise interesting, and I was interested in seeing this big net of web of satellites and see how it works. So I was into that, but then when any actor appears on the screen, the dialogue is so <laughs> like it, it's so like te- it's that telling the audience dialogue. It's hey brother. You know, everything's telegraphed. Everything. It feels like you're being like um, spoon-fed the plot and instead of having to use any brain at all. Absolutely. All the time. Everybody is telling you something. And it's really... The dialogue still... At first I was like, this is almost coming across as like a Sharknado type like spoof <laughs> on one of these movies. Like, it you know, felt that way. I wondered what you thought. I really, I was like, really? This is... You know the just scene, being critical... Or is it? Is yeah. it really happening? When he had to go and see his brother, like who lived in like a little like ecological um, trailer <laughs> park <laughs> or something. Well, no, he lived on trailer. his own in a trailer yeah. that he's got set up with. Basically, he's off the grid. That scene's so again. That scene's like telegraphing. Oh, his brother is into solar power, and his brother is into making this car an electric car. And it's like every single thing is like, oh God, you don't have to go that thick with stuff. Well, I think that whole thing was to tell you how smart and clever he was. Yeah, and his daughter is yeah. inconsequential, I, I found. I know. Um, and it's just, and the dialogue between them is just, it's telling the audience what's happening dialogue always. Nobody's ever feels real to me. Uh, even, like, this Ed Harris is in this movie. It was, it's just all, like, Getting everybody's really phoning turned in. turned off of Ed Harris lately. Well, I... Absolutely loved him in what did we see him in? Just oh, Westworld. I, yeah, I Westworld, Westworld. Absolutely. I, yeah. I correction movies. Yeah, Ed Harris. I'm not. I'm. I'm struggling. But in this movie, Ed Harris is just there to so they can put Ed Harris on the poster because people like Ed Harris, right? So it's quite clear, and he's phoning the whole thing in. And do you want another spoiler? And spoilers for the movie if you <laughs> haven't seen it. If yet. you haven't seen an Ed Harris movie. You're going to know he's not the good guy. I mean, it's pretty... (laughs) Everything about this movie is like, you can guess it before it happens, right? Everything. Everything. Yeah, everything. Absolutely every single thing. As soon as that twat British guy... Yeah. No offense. They're on on the International Space Station. Yeah, and he's just this annoying, loudmouth British guy, which they always seem to... That's the fodder for like, oh, he's the snarky little British guy. I was like, okay, he's the guy. He's the bad guy. 
Obviously, Ed Harris. I mean, it was unfortunate because you want to feel a little, like if Gerard Butler had been the bad guy, that would have been, I would have been like, oh, okay, I can, is that his name? Gerard Butler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was. But there's, there's nothing you won't catch before it happens, really. No, you won't go. <gasps> no. Oh, oh my, my God. Oh my God, I didn't. Now, if you do and that you were really surprised and I apologize, I'm not trying to be hateful, but come on. So, so there's that. It, it, it's, it's like a badly constructed film um, in terms of. Like, I would say, I've you know, I like Armageddon. And if you watch... The thing about Armageddon, right, and it isn't a great movie or anything, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, but it's nearly a three-hour movie, and there's some really good character development on the characters. Like, the first hour of the movie, you're learning about the characters. And you eventually get invested in the characters, and I'm not afraid to say the end of Armageddon, the first time I saw it, it brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> You know why? Because I care about something, right? In this movie, they try to do the same thing, don't they? I I, I was yeah, like, oh. oh, it's a hundred percent that we're yeah. going to take Armageddon, we're going to take the volcano thing where the guy has a daughter, and we're going to take yep. this one where the guy has a daughter, and we're going to take this one where the guy has a daughter, we're going to dig this one where the guy has a daughter, and he's divorced. They're all divorced because yep. they're all assholes, <laughs> and so the daughter, the kid, has no faith in them, and we're going to do the thing where you know. They are sacrificing themselves or apparently going to be sacrificing themselves to alleviate the previous asshole status that they have. Yeah. It's a it's a tool. I'm not saying that stories aren't repetitive, because they are. However, when it's just I'm badly say done. It's, you know, yeah, it's telegraphed to you, old fashioned telegraph, or it's satellited to you. I don't know. However, it's just so in your face. All of this being said though, I have to inject this. I really enjoyed it. Oh, just because, no, no, not, no, no, no. not the elements. Because oh my god, every time that brother came on, I was like, wow, he's this horrible. Is like the and I think they had a wig on him. Did no, you think? No, his, ha so his hair bad. is like that. I've seen. Is that's actually how his hair is all it the time. It looked so bad, yeah, and it distracted of... me constantly. And he was really bad. He was like, the, and I apologize to him if he's listening. We're he's British, about. but if. He, He's like he's in a 1985 soap opera on in America. It's that kind of acting where it's like his little jaw quivers and he. Gets I would a actually bleh. apply that awful. to all the actors in this movie, including Ed Harris. Everybody is on General Hospital. It, that's how it feels to me. It did I, feel that way, yeah. And that's why I said at some point I was like, "Is this actually a farce, like a send up of this movie?" There was a point where I was like, "This is a." Th Am I a sucker for taking this seriously? I think they're making this. This is funny, right? Like I, I was like, they 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 know what they're doing. They they're making it seem hammy, like a B movie, but they're not, are they? They're not at the end when it ended. I was like, no, that's not what they were going for. They're actually trying to make another day after tomorrow type movie, but just not as good. Yeah, taking it very seriously <laughs> while also having one liners that just don't fit. It's um, the, it was a bad combination. But again, go back to volcano. Go back to Dante's Peak. Actually, go back to Independence Day, the core, uh, the Twister, the core. All of them have the same disease. It's like it's written by a fifteen-year-old who wants to make a movie. Now, I'm not knocking fifteen-year-olds. I'm just saying a person who hasn't developed any sort of like they thought of the idea of the geostorm and then they just filled in the rest. Yes. You know, instead of writing a really uh, compelling story about compelling people, and then on top of that, add the geostorm. The because geostorm, you could do it either way. The geostorm and the actual network of satellites in the, in the space there is actually the interesting part of this whole sci-fi premise, I think. That's interesting. I, I like that. It also reminded me of when things started to go wrong in Day After Tomorrow, when the birds started hitting the windows and stuff. I was like, oh, this is like a good you know, thing that's going to happen. But let's get on to, like... The airplane was pretty good. Yeah, I was, I was like, just whoa! Like, well, if we get on to the special effects and the actual... You come to this movie to see things be destroyed. That, I mean, that's what these movies are, right? You want to see something you've never seen. And I'll admit, there wasn't enough for me. There is nowhere near enough. I reckon if you condense them all into a montage, it'd be two to three minutes. Here's another big spoiler. It's called Geostorm. But the timer runs out right before there's a big fucking geostorm. Yeah, I would say... <laughs> there is no geostorm. I would say about three minutes of destruction total in the whole movie. Yeah, it's not much. Yeah, and a lot of timers ticking down 
it, something's going to happen at the end of this timer and then it doesn't. There's a yeah. lot of that too, which is really annoying to me because I it kept it cut and it does that like really kind of hokey. Here's one country. Look at these Indian people running around, and here's some Chinese people running. It, you know, like all those movies do. Well, they're it's trying to make it feel global. Yeah, which I admire that part because not all disaster movies go that far. Um, but it's extremely wasted time because I don't need to see the kid with his dog and the lady with the umbrella. I'm not identifying with them. Them. I don't mean they don't mean anything to me. Those are super. But you can, those are huge scenes that last a very short period of time and have zero impact nothing, on the story. Nothing. When it kept showing you the kid, and basically, I'll tell you, listener here, there's a kid. There's a disaster going on. He's split up from his dog. And as an audience member, I assume you're supposed to be, oh my god, he's split up from his dog. And then when the you know finale comes, he's his dog yeah. is fine. And it's he's another tool where you are experiencing that thing that's that event through some character that they want you to follow yeah just like um just her like, driving the car like the the scientist driving his car along when all the the pipes are blowing up out of the street i did light up up i did but the yeah. him driving through is just so that we go through the action yeah. and it's it, it, when it when it's super obvious it's like, uh, just let me see the disaster part. I don't need to see it from someone's point of view. Do you remember the movie 2012 where he drove yeah. the limo through all the stuff? It's just that, isn't it? How about um, <laughs> the Rock movie? That one. Yeah. You don't even know the name of that one, do you? I don't. That's, but that one was like, was <laughs> that one at least felt legit, right? And it, it had some good special effects. What was it? It, it was, was the Rock. And Sin City Lady. It was the Rock. It was Sin City Lady. They had a little family. He was driving a helicopter. Mm-hmm. Come on, people, tell me. <laughs> Um, We're not live. We watched it last year about this time. Yeah. I keep thinking Escape from New York, but it's nothing like that. Hey, Escape from New York. Now there (laughs) is a good disaster movie. That's not really a disaster movie. Yeah, I don't actually remember what that movie's called. That is hilarious. That is. Is it called... What was it about? What was the actual threat? I don't even remember. Was the threat an earthquake? Was it a tidal wave? I don't know. I'm sure this is riveting to listen to us. I'm looking down my list, so when I see it, I'll tell you. It's that movie with the earthquake and the rock. Well, again, <laughs> that's a really cheesy movie, but it, for some reason, it stands way ahead of this movie in terms of everything. Yeah, it's thing. hard to pinpoint what it is that makes some of them... It could be your state of mind on the day. Like, this one I enjoyed just because I enjoyed it. Mm. Not because of the elements, but as a whole... I was in the mood for a disaster movie. I was in the mood for like, you know, duh, 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 kind of thing. And I guess my standards were pretty low. And it's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's good. But if you just want to pop in and watch a movie on a Saturday afternoon that, you know, I'm not going to knock it. You might want to drink a few drinks first or whatever. And, you know, loosen up a little bit. You might enjoy it more. Yeah, it's not the best day to give up heroin. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the wrong day to give up heroin. You know, you know what that movie that's from. If you're a movie buff, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, the G, the spe- the CGI and the special effects. There's too little of them. Some of it is really terrible. It's like we're watching um, Lost in Space on Netflix at the moment. It has better CGI than this movie, which is it's a TV show. Yeah. This movie has some terrible CGI. You know the wave that crystallizes into ice. Yeah. It looked like a commercial. Like it looked like a like nobody was trying. It just, it was just like a video game cutscene. It was bad. And that woman in a bikini running. Yeah. And the plane Again, it, we're supposed to be like, oh no. It was so green screen. It we was We looked at it for two terrible. seconds. We're supposed to care. Yeah, that too, yeah. Like there's a lot of th- there is a lot of destruction and you you know <laughs> they focus on a little kid and the dog. Oh, the little kid and the dog are all right. But forget the million people who died over there. Yep. Because def- Oh, that's definitely a, a a thing with these movies. At the end, you smile and you put your foot up on a big rock and put your hand under your chin like, I've saved the day. When like a million people and half of a country have been completely destroyed. Exactly. Because we know, watching this movie, that millions of people must have died, right? And then there's a part where Gerard Butler says to his brother... <laughs> Well, thank God my kid's all right. Like, you know, like, thank God God my kid's all right. Like, we don't care about all these Chinese people who died that we saw die. Like, oh, God. Yeah. So, yeah, but, yeah, any of these movies, you you have to kind of, um, like, so all the casualties at the end, you have to just, like, knock them off. Like, 
put all those casualties over there. The dog is alive. Everything is good. You know, so that's how this movie kind of turns out. So is there anything I like? Let me see. I like anything that's set in space. And they do go to the space station. And there was a really kind of... I liked the scene where he had to go out to conveniently get the thing that the guy said, you know? You know? Oh, my God. That was my least favorite thing. I really almost. liked that scene because I like scenes like the movie Gravity where they're in spacesuits and they're using the thrusters. But this one, he's holding on to a thing and the thrusters have gone crazy. So he's like ripping... You know, space station's getting ruined. Like, all the solar panels are flying It looked off. pretty good. I did like that part. Oh, San Andreas. San Andreas How's is the that? name of that movie. It wasn't really... It was like the big earthquake that all of California falls into the ocean. I would... Like, on the scale of disaster movies, San Andreas would be like a seven, and this would be like a one, you know? On <laughs> no. The ri- no, 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 no. It's not below the core. On the Richter scale. Is the core a zero, then? I think I like the core better than this. Oh, my God. Yeah, I do, seriously. <laughs> at least it, at least it, I actually found it interesting that they were going into the Earth, but then the actual reality of them going into the Earth was really yeah, it's boring. All, it's worse than this. As it, far as, like, dialogue and the super sappy stories. It is, but I'm far more interested So you were in, in the mood, you see. It didn't make it better. So it's no. not a fair assessment. Well, I, my fair assessment of this movie is it's not good. I I'm the, I like that space bit where he flies and he's holding on to the thing. That was my whole enjoyment from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that lasts about, what, a minute, maybe? Any dialogue... Yeah, the talking scenes with the brothers are too long. All of that was really overdone and boring. They they, they treat you like an absolute idiot as an audience. Like, everything is being explained really, like, basically. Um, I'm going to say this, and I don't know how it's going to sound, but it feels like a movie that's made intentionally to then be dubbed in other languages and to be sort of an international... Type of offering. Feels like that a little bit. Because you can simplify. The dialogue is very straightforward. The scenes are very bo- like plain. Nobody is not moving around a lot. There's not a lot to keep your eyes on. So if you're reading subtitles or you're listening with dubbed, there's not a lot of depth at all. And it feels like one of those you could sell around the whole world. It's sort of supposed to identify with everybody. I felt that a couple times, which seems really weird. It's very unoffensive. It's very... Like, vanilla disaster movie. There's nothing really exciting or different about it. It, it, You know, and when they start to boil it down to this weird, this conspiracy thing with the president and all that, all that is so boring, like, and the the, um, lady you playing the special secret service thing. It's Trying too hard. It turns into, like, um, this little soap opera-y type scenario over here that's, like, and then, you know, there's a lot of driving away from, like, storms. And there's storms behind <laughs> them, you know, conveniently. Get under this bridge, we'll be fine. Drive under the bridge. The lightning won't get us, you know. There's a lot of that too, isn't there? And then there's a lot of stuff that you're really, like, scratching your head at when you're looking at it. Like, like in 2012, 2012. You know when the 2012, when you're watching that and that... um limousines driving and you're like this could never happen is yeah. that that limousine would have been destroyed with, within seconds like <laughs> the same in this this guy's driving this electric car this tiny little electric car he's out running all kinds of fast cars on the on the freeway for some no, reason it's not running because they're honking at him yeah but it's he's holding re- them up it, he's he's driving on two wheels because the pavement is like splitting as he's driving you know it's it's you can't there's no basis in... And, unfortunately for that guy, it didn't matter that he survived that. <laughs> because he knew too much. Yeah. So what's going to happen to Conspiracy. anyone who knows too much? Yeah. So, and also, yeah. that was a really bad assassination plan, because how do you know what's going to happen? The like assassination plan was in pushing, him into, pushing him into traffic. <laughs> he could have just broke his ankle and been like, He's I'm pushing. fine, I'm telling everybody everything. And But no. That was where I was like... That's why I'm saying it's written, it feels like it's written by a like a like a young, young person who hasn't seen enough movies, thought enough about big stories, and, you know, like... Yeah, well, let me explain the assassination attempt, because it is hilarious, right? So, you've got the hitman type guy, who <laughs> are in all these movies, that guy, 
Yeah. Yeah. He stood behind the guy who was going to assassinate at a traffic, you know. With a, a bunch of people. At a crossing in the middle of like a busy place. And then he just pushes him in front of the car. Doesn't like snipe him or shoot him in the head with a silenced pistol. None he of that. Literally, his arms go shoved straight Shove. out. And yeah. then he stands for a second. Everyone's looking. And then, and then he, the next thing uh, you know, he's getting in the car and driving away. Yeah, it's real garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the way an assassination would... Uh, and, and why, you know, it's not like he needed to make that... It's not like he needed to make that look like an accident. I also he, felt like I've seen some high school plays that were better. You know? Yeah. I know. If you've seen some high school plays, they don't you know, have they're the challenging. CG budget, those um, <laughs> no, high, but high school plays. I'm talking about story and performing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well... Yeah, it's pretty bad. It, you know, here's another, here's another hilarious thing. We were watching, the movie started, Gerard Butler started to talk. He's a Scottish man. We all know that. He's talking in his phony American accent with the Scottish that drops out every so often. Like, he's Scottish-American. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to talk about this because and why... can't he just be Scottish? Well, I'm like, why is Gerard Butler... Um, talk, why is he doing that stupid American accent? And then as it's going on, I'm like... Yep, it's still stupid. Yeah, it's still stupid. And then he's on the space station, and he turns to a guy and says, "Oh, me and my brother were were born in the in the U in the UK." Right. And I was like, "Oh, okay. So that's how you explain all that away, <laughs> like that he sounds like he's Scottish." I don't know. I think you're picking up on something. Not everybody would. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't pick up his bad accent. His bad accent. It is horrible. His American accent. I've always thought so in anything that he has to be an American. And I'm like, it I feels always, like he's really trying to manipulate his mouth to keep it, you know, keep things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's real crappy. Like, um, you know, when somebody's doing like a like those old radio plays and they're trying to sound really American. Yeah, it sounds like that. But there's a Scottish background to it. It's weird. But um, his brother there, who's actually a British guy, it sounds very British when you listen to him. He he uh, did all right. He was annoyingly British. Yeah, but. He, oh, he me, sounds I'm like an American in this movie, right? Yeah. You didn't you probably didn't know he was a British guy. So let's move on to that fine cast here. Gerard Butler plays Jake Lawson. What did you think? I mean, we could just say everybody's shit, but everybody's is there shit. anything you like here? <laughs> Not really. I mean, if we're gonna is compare Jake- them all to each other, he'd probably that we took it pretty seriously. Which trying is, to take it seriously when that does it's like a square peg in a round hole. It doesn't fit very well. I think good. him taking it too seriously is like to the detriment of this though. Yeah. Almost like it should if it were, if he'd have kind of done it a bit tongue in cheek, like a Bruce Willis or somebody. No, then I would have hated it more. Uh, I think maybe that would have worked better for this movie. Because no. this movie seems bad. <laughs> no, I'm sick of those. I want some real gutsy, disastery thing. I want no more one-liners. No more like, <laughs> after some horrible thing has just happened. None of that. I want uh, no sense of humor in my disaster movies anymore. Gerard Butler is basically becoming like like a Liam Neeson guy. Like action movie guy. Um, and that's pretty much, he's got into that groove. And I don't personally think he's great I, I was ho- I was hoping he'd yell this is Sparta at some point you know when he was doing his um, deposition thing at the beginning I wanted him to yell this is Sparta so moving on to Jim Sturgis British another British actor who plays his brother Max Ugh. <clears throat> I mean no offense to the guy but oh my god it was really really poor I couldn't have I couldn't give a shit about him or the girlfriend lady or any of them, and particularly him, because he was so, like, he kept putting his jaw out and doing that thing that that's what made me think of high school plays. It reminds really... me a lot of um, Walking Dead Daryl. Mm. He could Not be really. Walking Dead Daryl's brother when he turns up on, on Walking Dead. It's like, oh, here's oh, another brother. So. Here's uh, another no, Daryl no, brother. I disagree. But, <laughs> no, I just didn't think he was, he just, and people can go, oh, well, it wasn't a good part. Nope, nope, nope. We've seen many parts that are below... That don't have a lot going on, but the person playing it makes it impactful. How so. could you care about the two brothers even? They tried to make you care about them both for, you know, oh, they've lost the parents. Oh, you know, they kept mm-hmm. everything that you could lay on. <laughs> it was laid on in this movie, but never did I care about either of them. Unfortunately. Um, there, there's a, the, the daughter, Hannah Lawson, she's played by Talithia Alina Bateman. 
I thought she was going to mean something in this movie because she does the narration at the beginning. She narrates the whole... And the end. Why the end, why the world is... You know, she narrates a whole big section of the movie and then she, they bring her in. I thought she was going to end up stowaway in space or something with him. <laughs> I thought it was going that direction, but she really amounts to nothing. Like, just that he has to have something... Yeah. You know. It's really bad. Mm. It's really bad. I'm, I know... Abby, I'm not saying definitively because someone else might find this to be their favorite movie, but it's poorly done because if I don't care, I don't even care if Atlanta gets wiped off because she's in Atlanta and you're supposed to be like, oh, no, well, we'll hear all the names of the cities. They telegraph them to this in words on the corner of the screen. Every time a city is being destroyed, we get the name of the city just yeah. da, 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 typed right on there like a X-Files kind of thing. Um. But we're very clear that it's not Atlanta, and that's where she is. And so you're supposed to be like, yes, everybody in these big, huge cities was devoured, but not this one girl. <laughs> um, Abby Cornish plays Sarah Wilson. She's the Secret Service lady who happens to be in a relationship with the brother, conveniently. Yeah. Um, so when he needs a Secret Service lady to help him, there is one. We can go around and get her. That's pretty much how that whole arc yep. goes, right? Um. And when, and she establishes, establishes that she would never, ever pick him over the president or her job. And then she immediately picks him <laughs> over her job, yeah, like, three does. different times. In so, fact, he, <laughs> like, he comes around her house. Deal. He comes around her house. She said, there's no way I would ever do anything wrong. I'm, I'm, I've am i sworn an oath, blah, blah, blah. Comes around her house with, with this hacker lady. And he goes, <laughs> yeah, we need your help. And she goes, okay, just this once. Okay, I'll do it. Like, instantly. It was really bad. Yeah, I mean... There was no thinking about it, really. She just, and then next thing you know, she's fully on with the plan, and she's more than once helping him. Um, Andy Garcia plays the president. Inconsequential. Yeah. It's unfortunately. Just, I mean, he's fine. He's person, just the but... president. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to it. And Ed Harris basically plays the bad guy. Leonard dun, dun, Decker. Dun. Yeah, if you don't... Pick, Shocking! From the moment you see De Ed Harris talking, the, the very first moment you see him, if you don't think that he's a bad person, like, that he's going to be the bad guy... You haven't guy, seen enough movies. You haven't seen any movies, no. <laughs> I mean, it's so clear. And, and his motive, oh my God. I mean, I get is, it, because there are people who have that in their minds. What's the motive to explain to the listeners? Are we just going to spoil it all? The motive well, is he spoiled. wants to go back and make America the big, uh, strong... Power that it was in 1945, you know, World War II, when we were the glory of the planet, and to he just wants to use this satellite weather thing to destroy all the enemies of America and rise us back up to glory. Yeah. Now, what was this thing in the rock? Pretty much trying to <laughs> well, he wasn't trying to destroy anything. He was trying to wake up everybody to the plight. Yeah. And whatever. And how about Truman Show? He was the guy who wanted to like what. Like, he wasn't super bad in Truman Damn, Show. Damn, the rock, the rock was really good, though. What the hell? <laughs> but was it? Yeah, I mean, you see, I've, if you're looking at it with today's eyes, would you think that? I've actually rewatched The Rock, and <clears throat> I still think it holds up. I don't know. That's another set of movies like Con Air and The Rock, where you at the time we're like, oh my god, but now would you be like today, going, oh, this is so lame. It's so lame. I'm not knocking your Con Air because that's like the first DVD you ever bought, but... <laughs> it is. Con Air, like Armageddon, it's very, very similar to Armageddon. It's just uh, so happens it's not in space. It's just the same thing, but on a plane with some convicts. Correct. But it's fun and it's silly. <laughs> and Steve Buscemi has a weird part like he does in Armageddon. It's the same thing. So um, this is directed by Dean Devlin. Um, he is he's basically a movie producer. But he's produced lots of giant movies like Independence Day, Godzilla, Day After Tomorrow. If you can think of a disaster movie that, um, are, you know, from the last 20 years, he's probably had some hand in it. Mm. Disaster Maybe movies. Maybe he needs is his, to move on. Yeah, he's, he's Stargate, he did, he did it. Both Independence Days, he produced um, all Ugh. kinds of that kind of movie. But see, the, the, when you think about it, that's not impressive because they're not good. They're not great. I mean, well, that's the reality. Independence of Day is fun, right? Really fun. It's fun, but it's not good. It's just fun. No, I'll give I'll give Dean Devlin Dean Devlin some props for being the producer of the movie God's Pocket, which was excellent movie with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Remember that? 
That's pocket. Yeah, and the Irish, uh, this one. I'm showing uh, Sid Taylor. Oh, picture. yeah. Yep, yep. What a fantastic movie that was. And uh, yeah, give him props for that. There's a good movie to go That's and watch. That's fair. Um, but yeah, he's doing. Oh, Mr. Dean Devlin's next movie as producer next year is Independence Day 3. Oh. The second one was horrible. Just let it die. Just let it go. <laughs> the second one was as bad as this movie, to be honest. It was. It was bad, bad. Yeah. Let it all go, man. Just move on. How about be creative and make up something new? Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a really cool disaster movie that actually is pretty good. Like, it can be done. But see, that's the thing. Their standards are different. Because they think this is good. Well, I almost think, as well, I was thinking about this earlier, that this movie is kind of out of time. Like, it's like, you know, 10 years ago when we thought these movies were awesome and we couldn't get enough of them. We were just like, please bring on another, bring on another. If it was released then, it probably would have been good. But now it's like too far It wouldn't far be any gone. different. I mean, it's but it perception. would have been like, oh, look, this is cool. Like, you would have watched yeah. it and thought, you know, because it was the fashion to have these kind of movies. Like, like superhero movies are a big thing for the last... Right, and we're going to watch those in 20 years and go, oh, God. I think so, too, yeah. Iron Man was so stupid. But it feels like this movie was made 10 years ago and only now just got put out. It was, like, made during that period where everybody liked this kind of thing. Now, I feel like we've moved on a bit from the dumb action. I mean... Have we? I don't mind the big action, but the dumb script is what ruins it. If you if you had a decent script, you know, it might it would elevate it slightly. Like something like Interstellar. Yeah, give us some different motives, different reasons, and the different thing about the scientist guy being the guy that that's the way they all are. I mean, just something different would be good. Yeah, on the Blu-ray there are three extras, and they're just like basic uh, EPK type, you know, his... What and what did I say when this movie was over? If you're going to watch some extras, I'm out. Yeah, I they're, do they're only care. three very short um, little snippet things. So, uh, in conclusion on the movie Geostorm, I would say i not recommend this to you at all. <laughs> I'd recommend it to somebody who just wants to sit and watch like a dumb movie. Oh, well, I say if you want to sit and watch a dumb movie, watch one of the other dumb movies that <laughs> I can think of that are much better than this one, dumb movie. Hmm. You know, this seems like... That's subjective. I would tell tell you to watch Day After Tomorrow again. Or, or for the first time, if you'd never saw that. Because it's such a, it's a much better movie, even though it's the same thing, really. Yeah. It's just better put together than this. This just isn't... It's just not well put together. The actors are in it. The actors in it should don't be better. Don't forget Jake Gyllenhaal. Correct. The actors in this movie, when you look at them on paper, you would think, well, that's probably quite good. But it really isn't. And look at the cover to this movie. Look at that cover <laughs> with those little boxes. Is that their IMDb uh, profile pictures? Did they just pull them and stick them on there? That's it's what it looks bad. like. <laughs> it looks like they went on there and just pulled five of the actors and stuck them on. Did they get the names above the right people? Oh, yeah. I love it when they do that. Yeah, oh, but- yeah they did on this one. Fortunate. Yeah, some, if you look at Blu-ray boxes um, for movies, often... They'll have faces of the people and the names above, and the names above don't correspond to the pictures. It's quite funny. Uh, the movie we're reviewing next week actually has that error on the Correct. cover. Correct. I don't think it's an error. I think they just don't care. It's about billing, and then the person who does the image isn't yeah. synced up with the... True. So, um, yeah, in conclusion, I don't recommend it. Fair um, enough. Sid Tart will give... Do you recommend it? I said already what I said. All right. You so, um, thank you to Warner... We can't love them all, Warner. And this one, we, we didn't no. love. I mean, we do like a lot of your movies. <laughs> but we don't like this one. <laughs> so next week, we are reviewing the movie Hostiles, a very different movie to this movie. It's a Western starring um, Batman. Not the current Batman, the last Batman, Christian Bale. Right. Um, so yeah, we're going to be looking at a Western. It's been a while since I've seen a Western, so I'm kind of interested to see. Cowboys versus Aliens. I don't class that as a Western. Well, I'm saying it was. And would that be the last one? Uh, probably. And this one's a series, you know, Hostiles. Well, is Westworld. A, yeah, Westworld. <laughs> Not Western, but. Hostiles is a serious Western about. Yeah. I forget to tell you, I think one day I was flipping channels and I think it was Westworld, the original movie on. Yeah, excellent. Because it was like this really old room with a bunch of TV screens and. A white room. Somebody laying. On a table, but and they had the skin pulled back. Yep. It looked like old school, like 
70s yeah, like robotics. Bit, yep. It wasn't a white room. I don't remember. It was kind of dark. It might have been this. It could have also been the sequel, Future mm-hmm. World, which is the... Maybe. But I didn't watch it because that wasn't the beginning and I was like... It's oh, fantastic. It uh, we should actually get it and watch it. Well, the, yeah. uh, the original's really good. I've seen it a lot when I was a kid. Yul Brynner. It's really good. So, um, yeah, I mean, now it's going to be dated, but if you think, you know, the actual concept of it from back then, it's cool. Yeah, talking of Westworld, it's back next weekend. Nice. So exciting. So, um, moving on to movie recommendations, I am going to go, obviously we just watched a disaster, disaster, disaster. I'll call it a double disaster movie. I'm going with my favorite disaster movie, that would be Armageddon. I will always recommend that one, if it's a, you know. And I was thinking of Gerard Butler and how bad he was in this movie, and I was thinking... Is there a movie I like Gerard Butler in? And there obviously is. It's Zack Snyder's 300. Yeah. Um, I love that movie. I think it's stylish. I think it's really fun to watch. And it's like, you know the video game God of War? It's like the movie version of that to me. It's just like this crazy, you know, crazy battles, really interesting visuals. And Gerard Butler, I think, is pretty good in it. And that was kind of when we first saw him, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like at the beginning. So they're my recommendations. 300 and Armageddon. And yours are? Mine are, even though it's not, they're not good. I'm just putting these out there. We've mentioned them already. The core. Because we had such high hopes for it. So it still sticks in my mind that if I were to watch it again, it might change somehow. I almost <laughs> feel like I need to see it again. Now. It's so bad. The French guy. And then we've got, you know, millionaire How? baby who's the... just Hillary the, Swank. Don't care about her. It's really bad. But if you want to see a disaster movie that doesn't look up at the skies necessarily for a solution, but digging down in the ground, that's your movie. And the other one is Deep Impact, because I actually like Deep Impact. It's also lame, and you barely see any destruction you at see, all. You see, the last... It is very much at the end. It's just the story of how we get to that point. It's the last two minutes of the movie is disaster. The rest of it is not But like, the all. teenagers get married, you know, Frodo gets married to the girl, and... Came out the same year as Armageddon. Yeah. And Armageddon. And I like Tia Leone, so, you know. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that year, that summer, Deep Impact and Armageddon, like, literally, like, weekend, like, one was on July the 4th weekend and the other one was the weekend after. Wasn't it also the same week as, like, uh, Twister, or the same year as Twister and... No, 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 no. Twister was before that. 96 was Twister, I think. Right. Armageddon would have been, like, 99... Mm, okay. But uh, yeah, that was the disaster movie um, year, as well as your other ones. So um, yeah, there are recommendations. Games and A. Scully stuff. I've been playing more Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, I've got into a groove of playing it each day. They have this thing where you can, if you drive 26 miles every day, they call it the daily workout, you win a free car every day. So my thing is to drive the 26 miles by doing some of the challenges and then get my free car and then take my free car into the photo mode of the thing called scapes and uh, take a photo. And I have a bunch of photos. If you go to um, Gran Turismo, if you own this game, if you go to their website and you subscribe to me, I'm called A Scully on there, you can just look at all my photos. I put one up there every day, so I, I really like taking the photos. Even Sid Talk was involved in taking the photos. Yeah, it's fun. It's just like, here's a car, here's a background, make it look really pretty. Use all the effects, use the camera, blur, you know. You could take, you could do any. you can, well, you can't do anything. You've got, <laughs> no. you've got only certain tools, but you could probably do as much as you can do with a camera, like. No. Plus I mean, you, you can't put your car just any place, you can't reposition the camera completely, none of that. I mean, you've got a set little area that's pretty fixed. Yeah. But as far as colors and weirdness with effects, you can go a lot with You do can a take some that. very nice pictures of cars, though. It's kind of like car porn, as you would describe it. Yeah. Because the detail on the cars is, I mean, you. when I've took a screenshot of one of my cars on one of these backgrounds... I've said to you, there's no way you can t- tell that's a video game. It just looks like a car in a real place. It's it's quite cool the way they did all the lighting and everything. So that's GT Sport. It's on the PlayStation 4. Uh, talking about the PlayStation 4, this upcoming week is the new God of War game. And it's you know a reimagining of the whole thing. It's called God of War, taking it back to the beginning. And it's a whole new Kratos. It's, I don't think... The previous events of God of War matter. We're starting again, and this time it's in Norse mythology. So 
you know, it's um, a very different kind of game. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that next week. And on Netflix uh, yesterday came out a new show called Lost in Space. If you remember, back in the 60s, there was a show called Lost in Space on TV. And it was kind of like a comedy uh, adventure show, would you say? It didn't feel very comedy to me. And I've watched it recently, so I'm not sure what it's you're... It's a bit <clears throat> campy, let's say, like Batman was. It's... Not, full, not as fully as I think you remembering it. But um, the new version of uh, Lost in Space is a Netflix original that they've just put out. All ten episodes are available now. And we watched the first three episodes last night. What did you think of it? Loved it. I love science fiction. So I think it's really good. It's well... It is it is the, the show... I mean, the tagline is, danger will find them, right? So every episode you have to be prepared for a big, giant, <laughs> dangerous thing that in the split second... Somebody's going to come along and something's going to happen to rescue them. That's how space shows go. That's how Star Trek, of all my lovely Star Treks work, every episode is something disastrous or something dangerous or, you know, imposing that could happen to the crew or the ship because they're in space. That's how this is. So it's, again, nothing new. However, they've put in people like Parker Posey, whose character is like, oh, and the... Even the family has issues, you know, it, it seems a bit overwritten there with the tension between the father and the mother and the not really understanding the dynamic of the family, but it's tension filled. And you would think, really, the earth is falling apart. You all went to space and you still are petty about your little relationship. That's the only thing that bugs me is that she's still bitchy with him. Yeah. I'm like, move on. Like, you've got your family on a planet that you don't know where you are. You don't know how you can barely survive. Get over this shit. Get over your stupid relationship stuff. However, yeah. it's a dynamic they wanted to throw in there so I can go along with it. Just because, so far, and the robot, oh my, robot is like amazing. I love Does it. he have a name, the robot, or is it just robot? <clears throat> robot, I think, in the original. Hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's um yeah, they're lost in space. And every week, they'll be more lost in space, I guess. Well, they're on one. The original show was just on, like, a planet, and the planet looked like a Star Trek planet, mm-hmm. just like some cardboard rocks and stuff. Remember, didn't it? this was uh, okay. It was in sixty eight, sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, sixty eight. So about the same time as right. Star Trek. And this one is completely uh, it's CG spectacular. Like it's it's better than this movie in terms of production. I think the ships are better. How cool is their inside of their ship and the very good. The costumes are really good. Like the spacesuits and everything. Everything looks like it. Like money was spent on it. The planet is really cool. It's got lots of different weather systems on the planet. One one part of the planet's snowy, one's desert. You know, I'm sure it's got more than what we've seen so far. But it, the production of it is, it's like a movie. I don't think there's a, there's a fine line, isn't there, like between TV and movies. And this crosses into the movie part, I think. It's, it's as much a movie as this Geostorm was. In terms of oh, outlook. more than that! Yeah, better. oh my god, it's way better. Yeah, way better. The dynamic of the characters and the oh, it's written better. The for complexity sure. of what could be, but then again, remember we're going to get possibly like ten, fifteen, thirty hours of it. If it goes for a few seasons, you get yeah. a lot more. Um, so you have to always think of that. Television is just a big long movie, uh-huh. and so and this is to- a ten-hour movie basically because <laughs> it's ten episodes. So yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's available now. I recommend it. I think it's really fun if you like space stuff. Uh, so uh, that's stuff for this week. What's for dinner? Sit down. I think I'm going to Subway. Nice. Or maybe Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's, I don't have to get out of the car, which means I don't have to I feel like we shoes. had Jimmy John's yesterday. I feel like you're right, but it was good. <laughs> oh, I did like it with the chips, though. I know. Well, fries. Chips. I, about, we have, Wendy's is very close, so I can go over there and get fries and then go over to Jimmy John's. It's really I actually, terrible. I actually prefer the <laughs> chips from the... Now, you're British, so you call French fries chips. Yeah, then to the crisps. I prefer the chips to the crisps. But we have fries and chips. Yes, chips are so potato confusing. chips. <laughs> well, I've learned to decode what you mean, <laughs> and I know what you mean. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll do French fries and Jimmy John's. And that would be Jimmy And that's John's. because there are days when I don't want to watch you do the dishes. <laughs> you, you don't, do the dishes. You don't have to watch me do the dishes. <laughs> and what I'm saying is... I don't have to do the dishes, so there should be no impact on me. There I do not- like to cook. I cook this week a few times, and I always default back to our little fake. We call I call it fake chicken. I'm sure I love their corn, vegetarians. Corn the reason peas. I'm telling you what we're eating is because we're vegetarians. We like to tell people 
you know, it's not the end of the world when you stop eating dead animals. And we're not animal people or anything. I'm not. It's just that we just don't eat them anymore. So we have this thing called corn, which is mushroom protein made into like the shape of a chicken breast or a chicken nuggety thing or whatever. And it's really good. And I've gotten to where I cook it in a way that I could literally eat two panfuls of it. What it's are they called just- exactly? Cubes. Corn, I'm not sure. Yeah, because it's not like nuggets. They're just like No, well, there are nuggets, though. There are the deep, there are the crunchy ones that we bake. Yeah, those and then are there's too. the little bits and pieces that you can just, I just throw in a skillet, and then I put in seasonings and let them simmer in there. And then there's the patty things, and some of them are breaded, some aren't. I mean, there's all kinds. And for us, to me, it's one of the best meals. So I kind of default to that all week this week. Out of all the, um, like fake meat products we've tried morning star and corn seem to be the best of absolutely them. yeah i mean we've tried a lot of different ones and i do love tofu so you know it's yeah. not a meat substitute it's just that i really i like that i was watching that chinese youtuber that i found yeah. he lives in china and they one of their meals what they had was meat filled tofu yeah really weird <laughs> And then she's like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, like, sorry. Sorry for that. It seems really <laughs> weird. I mean, tofu is just soy milk that's been fermented yeah. and made into a cube, kind of like the process of making cheese. So there's nothing to say that it has to be a meat substitute. You could literally have cubes of fried tofu, deep fried, next to chicken nuggets. I feel like meat eaters would say the only way to improve tofu is to fill it with meat. Mm. Well, you were a meat eater once. Would you have said that? I never had tofu when I was a meat eater, ever. I'd never tried it. I hadn't either. No. No. You never it. know. You never know. Because I love our tofu. When I make that tofu, oh my God, it's so good. I have to make two whole batches at a time. It's actually a good uh, point. Look- if you are a meat eater out there <coughs> and you um, like, and you've never tried tofu, because I hadn't when I was a meat eater, never tried it. Because why? Like, because I can always eat meat, right? There's, I don't need a substitute. <laughs> But try it, because it's actually pretty good. If you get, like, a curry or something and you... What you learn now, though, after 10 years of not eating meat, you don't even need a meat substitute. No, not really. Because we go to Subway or Jimmy John's, you just get the sandwich with all the vegetables on it. And yeah. That, yeah, salad sandwich. Mm-hmm. Um, if, we, if I go to a restaurant, I will get salad, french fries, onion rings, something like that. I don't need them to have a veggie burger. I don't... None of that, because it's all just food, you know? Yeah. All right, so um, what is your... Oh, you've already said your advice. I said my advice. Yeah, life is short. Don't be an asshole. However you determine that, Actually if you want to ask me... Actually, says jerk on the... Um, yeah, I was trying to be nice, but I decided to be myself instead. Um, yeah. If you want me to define what that is for you, just let me know. I'll be happy to tell you what you're doing that equals assholiness. All right, so you can check out our website, sayschooly.com, sidtor.com. You can catch us both on social network, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, also, Instagram, I, I'm on there. You are on there. Is that I'm it? on Instagram, yeah. Yeah, we're both on there. A. I Scully don't know what my Sid name is. I'm A. Scully. You're probably <laughs> Sid Talk. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> I'll look real quick. Um, you can also oh, catch Oh, yeah, I'm us. Sid Talk. Yeah. C-I-D-T-A-L-K. Sometimes, a, for some reason, A. Scully is taken on some places, and I it's like, not even, it doesn't really mean anything, but it's still taken. So sometimes I have to be called A. Scully.com or A. Scully.com. All right. But mostly I'm Ace So you can catch uh, this podcast on the Google Play Store, the iTunes Music Store. You can also catch it on TuneIn. If you've got an Amazon device, you can say whatever your trigger word is to wake up your device. Ours is... Uh, A word. A word. We like to say. And just say, listen to After the Show Movie Podcast on TuneIn, and it will play you the latest episode. It's actually pretty cool. I've used it myself. Because I do like listening to myself. <laughs> and... Uh, you can also catch, go to ascully.com and just click on the word subscribe. There's a whole panel there that comes up where you all those places you can go to are all in one place. Very easy. We're also on YouTube now. You can catch us on there. Uh, ascully.com is my name on YouTube. Just search for after the show. Email feedback to me at ascully, ascully.com. Don't email Sid Talk. And stay classy. Ah, it's very hard to say stay classy on this movie. Classy. <laughs> Disaster movies in general. Be more classier. Be better than this movie. Be better. And I'll say, think for yourself, or someone will do it for you. <laughs> <laughs>